to try our Pluto staking script in the testnet. I restarted the testnet and first I want to create a new user because I want this user to receive half of all the rewards. So I just pick file names for the verification key and the signing key. And then I use the Cardano CLI address keygen command where I just specify these two file names. So this will create a key pair. And then I use the address build command where that command as parameter gets the payment verification key file. That's the file where I just wrote the newly created verification key to and creates an address. Optionally, I could also specify a staking component for this address, but I don't do this in this case. So this is a pure payment address without a staking component. I can run that. And then if I look in the temp folder, I see that these three files have been created. I also created a script that checks the UTXOs at the address that I just created. And as expected, at the moment, there is no UTXO there. I just created the address. So there haven't been any transactions that could possibly send any funds to that address. So the address I just created is the one I want to use to parameterize our Pluto script. And once I've done that, I get the serialized script and can use that as a staking address. And then I want to register that staking address and delegate to the one pool we have. So one step at a time. So this is the newly created address. I need one argument, a TX in to pay for the transaction. I block that. I define various file names. So this here receives the serialized Pluto script. This will receive the staking address that corresponds to the script. Then I will generate a new address where the payment part is the payment part of user one. So the given by the verification key and signing key of user one. But the staking part is now our new stake address given by our script. Then file name for the registration certificate, file name for the delegation certificate. I also need the protocol parameter, so file name for that. And then again, one file for the unsigned transaction, one for the signed transaction. Set the node socket part. Now I run our executable and as arguments, I give the script file that I defined and our new address. So this will now parameterize our Plutus contract by this address and write the resulting Plutus core script to this file. Now that I have this script file, I can take it and build the stake address from it. So there's the stake address build Cardano CLI command for this. Takes the magic, the location of the script file and the name of the out file. I lock this new stake address. Now I want to build the new address for user one where the, as I said, the payment component is the verification key of user one but the stake component is our new script. So I use the address build command, testnet magic. Here the payment verification key file is the one belong to user one, but the stake part is given by a stake script file, our new script file that we generated. And I write the result to script payment address. I lock it. Now I can generate the certificates. So there is Cardano CLI stake address registration certificate. It just takes the name of the script file and the output file. 
Then I use Cardano CLI stake address delegation certificate, which takes again the script file. Then the stakeable ID I want to delegate to. So I get that from the command we looked at earlier, the query stake pools, and write the resulting certificate to the delegation file. Now I need the protocol parameters. We saw that before there's this query protocol parameters command. And finally, I can build my transaction. So takes the magic as change address. I use the new payment address for user one. I do that so that that address also is funded and can then accumulate rewards. Of course, I could do that in a separate transaction, but why use two transactions if I can do it in one? So I just use this new address as the change address out file as input the parameter I have to give to the script. This involves Plutus because the Plutus script has to be executed to check whether the delegation is valid. So any transaction involving executing Plutus needs collateral. So as collateral, I can use the same input. Remember, collateral must be a pure loveless UTXO. Okay, then I attach the registration certificate and the delegation certificate. And for the delegation certificate, I must also provide witnesses. So that could be in the case of a normal stake address, it would be the signing key belong to this, but now it's our script file and the redeemer. And as redeemer, remember we had type unit and I used type unit before. So in order to have a serialized form of the unit value, I use this unit.json, which I just copied from lecture three. And I need to provide the protocol parameters. And then I just sign. So the payment input for this transaction comes from our old user one address. So user one needs to sign it. So I sign it with the signing key of user one. And finally, I transmit. So first I look at the UTXOs of user one because I need one of those as input for my script. So we are back to the original distribution of funds, the 450,000 ADA and the almost 450,000 ADA split between two UTXOs. So with this, I now can call my script and I must provide this one of the two UTXOs as input to the script. Let's take the first one again. And it was successfully submitted. So now I have created this script based stake address. We can see it here a lot. So this is this new script stake address that's now based on our Pluto script. I created this new payment address. Recall the payment component is user one, but the stake component is now the Pluto script. And I submitted that. So now I can also use another script I wrote, which looks at the UTXOs at this new address. And we see that there are funds there now. And that is because I use this address as a change address. So I consumed this first UTXO of the original address to pay for transaction fees and deposit fees, registration fees for the certificates. And the change went to this new address. So I already have funds there. I also provided the script to get the stake address info for this. So we see that there is some info. So the delegation was successful with our new address, but at the moment there are no rewards yet because recall it always takes two or three epochs after you delegate before you first receive rewards. So we have to wait a little bit until we get rewards there. Now I waited a bit and we see that there are now 406 ADA in rewards already accumulated. Now I want to withdraw. 
and I created a script called withdraw user one script, which I first copy pasted from the withdraw script we saw before we talked about Lutus. And I modified it accordingly. So again, it takes an argument, a TX in to pay for a transaction fees. It again looks up the amount of available rewards using the script I just showed you and then picking out the appropriate field, the reward account balance field as before. But now um, I call it amount one because I also have an amount two, which is half of that. So I use this expression uh, Linux tool to do computation. So I divide this amount by two and I add one because if this is odd, um, dividing by two would round down and then I would have too little, so I need at least half. So if it's an even number, then I basically give one loveless too much, but of course that doesn't matter. Protocol parameter file, unsigned transaction, signed transaction. I log for debugging the protocol parameters, so that's all very similar. So now for the transaction, so testnet magic change address, I use the user one script address, this new payment address for user one. Out file as input, I use the specified parameter. Now I also need collateral because now our Pluto script will be executed again because it's a withdrawal action. So I use the same as I use this input also as collateral. Now this is where we make sure that validation will succeed. We pay the appropriate amount, this amount two, to user two. Recall, I mean, that's how we parameterize our script. We parameterized it by this address, by user two address. So withdrawal will only be legal if we pay at least half of the rewards to user two. Then withdrawal as before, now with amount one. And now we, as witness, must provide the script file and a redeemer file. Redeemer is again unit and the protocol parameters. Now for signing, when we did that without Plutus, with a normal stake address, we needed to provide two signatures, one for the payment part, one for the staking part. We still need the one for the payment part, which is again user one's signing key. But now we don't need the one for the staking part because this is now replaced by here the script and the redeemer. And finally we submit. But before I try that, I want to show how it fails. So to prove that it actually works and enforces that the specified address, in this case, this user two address, indeed gets paid half the rewards. So let me just for the moment delete this line. So I just don't pay user two. Now let me try what happens. So as input, I can use this UTXO. Actually, I have to use that UTXO because it's the only one sitting at this address. Okay, and we see it doesn't succeed. And we also see that we get debugging logs, insufficient reward sharing. If you recall, that comes from our trace if false in the Plutus code. So the condition is not satisfied that we paid at least half to the provided address. Now let me add that line again, execute this again. Now the transaction was successfully submitted. If I look at the UTXO, Earlier we had a bit less than 450,000 ADA. Now we have more, 450,275. We can also check user two. Recall when I did that earlier after I created user two, there was no UTXO there. But now our transaction sent half the rewards there. So we have 276 ADA there. So it works. I could withdraw, but only if I satisfied the condition that 
user two got at least half of the rewards, which is a strong indication that our Pluto script works as expected.